In this video, we're gonna watch a fella who goes out four wheel driving by himself and he gets himself into a world of hurt. He rolls his vehicle into a creek. He's by himself, there's nobody else around, it's pouring rain, there's no phone service. What is he going to do? I'm guilty of going four wheel driving a lot by myself and fingers crossed nothing like this has happened, but hey, it's well and truly worth thinking about. What are you gonna do if this happens to you? All right, let's watch this. So it starts out with a couple of still photos. So we can see that he's on his side. Look out, Bubby, come here. Good boy, come on. Now I don't know what Bubby thinks about all of this, but Obviously, he's outdoors having a good time of his life, so he's happy about it all. We can see that this, that uh, old mate starts the video and he's well into the recovery. Now, he says in his comments on the YouTube video that he was about to pack up and walk away because it's pouring rain, it's like, this is all too hard. And then he got to thinking, hang on, I've got a winch, I've got recovery gear, and I've watched a whole heap of YouTube videos on on various recoveries. Maybe I can get this vehicle back up on, on, on level ground and get it going again. So he's taken up the challenge, which is hats off to him. It's a big call. Now, the first thing we notice is that he's set up a double line winch, po uh, winch point. So that's, that means that the winch rope is coming out of the winch up to a snatch block so that it can redirect and come back down to the vehicle. The advantage of that is it gives us a double line pull, which increases the amount of power the, the winch has. Think of it like putting the winch into first gear instead of normally being in second gear. It slows everything down, but it increases the power. Why is that really important in this scenario? Because he's only got one battery without a motor that's running. So there's no way of recharging the battery. So he gets one shot at this and I don't know, you know, well, when I started watching this the first time, I'm like, you're done for, man. You're not gonna have enough battery power to do the job, but let's see what happens. You can see that winch is really starting to load up. All those cracking noises you can hear are coming from the winch line settling into its into the um, into the into the winch drum on the winch and the rope settling into the the snatch block and trees and so on creaking. So you're watching all of those items at the moment. All right, he's got it back onto its wheels. Now he's got to get it up the embankment. So, like, that's impressive, okay? That is really impressive. You would expect a good quality winch with a good battery to be able to do that much work and get that to the, the vehicle to that point. Now, he obviously needs to get it up back up onto the road. So, let's see what he does next because to my observation of this, he's going to have to reset that winch to a different angle so that he can actually pull it up on the road. So let's see how he does this, it's quite creative. Oh, there goes my signal. You can see what he's done on the front of the vehicle now. He's taken his recovery rope, it's not a snatch strap, it's actually a rope, and he's taken that and he's anchored it to the tree and then he's anchored it down to the front of the vehicle. That means that he can let go of the winch rope now and that recovery rope will hold the vehicle in place. I'm really impressed with the amount of recovery gear this, this fella's got with him um, on this trip and it's paying off in spades right now. I reckon he's, it's worth every cent and he's a pretty happy camper that he's got the gear to be able to give him a chance of doing the job. See the vehicle laying back and tensioning up the recovery rope, but it's being held in place.
All right, I'm gonna move that then. So now he's got himself set up with the recovery rope acting like a pendulum and the winch line coming straight up to the tree in front of the vehicle. So the pendulum effect is gonna pull the vehicle up onto the road as the winch pulls it forward. Really good thinking. You know what, I'm a hook up the double line. That doesn't make sense not to. Good call. You can hear him saying, I'm gonna go double line pull. Double line pull. So on the snatch block that he's got here, I just wanna raise a caution um, with the quality of equipment that you use. And this is probably what I'm about to say is probably one of the reasons I really like the snatch rings like the Factor 55 products, which um, <laughs> if you head to my website, you can uh, purchase through A24-7 on the website there. But um, the snatch blocks that he's using here, which are the, the double plate type, they're really good when you get a good quality one. Unfortunately, there's a lot of really cheap quality ones coming into the market from a country starting with C. I've seen two of these snatch blocks fail and I've seen a number of them that have failed out on the tracks. The, the, the material that the center pin is made of is not sufficient and what's happening is it's busting the circlip off the center pin and they're exploding and letting go of the load. I actually had this happen when we were up Cape York here in Australia with a TV show, I was helping, um, I was one of the presenters on a TV show called The Off-Road Adventure Show, and we were lowering a vehicle down a, a very steep embankment called Gunshot, it's pretty famous, and that snatch block failed and let go of the vehicle and it dropped about a metre, which was not impressive at all. When you buy recovery gear, you need to rely on it, as you can see here. So buy good quality gear, it is just not worth saving your money to, to buy the cheap junk because it will let you down and it could well hurt you or, or you know do injuries to, if not you, at least your vehicle. Regardless, buy good gear. And um, yeah, I use Factor 55 and recommend that gear, but there's other brands out there that are, are good quality brands if you prefer. All right, let's see how he goes. That poor battery. When you're doing a heavy winch, of any type, and normally you'd have your engine running, you need to give your winch a rest. And setting up a winch redirect or changing the winch configuration, like going from single line to double line pull or changing your mounting point is a good opportunity to let the winch cool down and rest. You are drawing significant power through the wires from the battery into the winch and everything starts getting hot. And so you just need to give it that break time. Now, the, you know, a rough rule of thumb is if you winch for 30 seconds, give it a, win a rest for about two minutes. It, I don't subscribe to anything that precise. Just give it a rest and winch for a bit and give it a rest and you'll, you, you won't kill your batteries and you'll give you a chance that your, your electrical components time to cool down a bit. So close. All right, there we go. So the front end's starting to crest now. Good wheel lift. You can see the back of the vehicle is actually pivoting around and coming upstream a bit, and that's because of that the pendulum being created from the, uh, the recovery rope, the kinetic rope. All right, well, there's that. 
All right, hopefully I can swing my ass out of here. So now he's, he's got the front anchored. So the winch rope is coming out of the front of the vehicle up to his, his uh, redirect, his snatch block, and then back down to the tow point of the vehicle so he can pull the back of the vehicle back up onto the, in, uh, onto the road surface. I know that moment of frustration where it's like, why won't it work? I've got a video I did where I did I set it up for a, for a bit of fun to uh, winch my little bandera out of a rut sideways. And uh, so we'll link that video in the description down below or maybe up here. Have a watch of it if you want to see me doing a similar sort of recovery, but I chose to do it because, I don't know, I'm stupid or something. <laughs> All right. I'm amazed that battery is still going. Okay, so there you go. He got it up. That, in my books, is really, really impressive that he was able to, by himself, get that vehicle up onto the road and start getting it repaired. Now, as it turns out, a bit of follow-up. I did, I did shoot old mate a bit of a message on YouTube and say, hey, what's going on? You know, how did it all go? and read a bunch of the comments. Turns out he did manage to drive it home. Credit, man, that's huge. And he, uh, and then they wrote the vehicle off on him, which I always feel sad about watching a vehicle like that. Obviously a very nice Lexus getting written off, but after something like this, hey, it happens. I reckon we've all learned a little bit out of that. It just shows you what you can do with a bit of thought, a bit of creativity, taking some time to think it through and maybe watching videos like this to see what you can learn about getting your four wheel drive out of a situation. As you may know, we've start, I've started the um, 4x4 online four wheel drive training course and uh, there'll be a link in the description down below where you can go and check that out if you'd like to get some online four wheel drive training. But um, there's, there's so much, information to be learned. And one of the feedback we've been getting from our students is, I'm terrified of breaking down out there or getting bogged or getting in a situation like this and not knowing how to handle it. And that's what I've been, one of the things we do in the four drive training course is help you understand how to handle and manage a situation like this. All right guys, I'm Matt Matt, stay safe on the trails.